All right, so here's the question, question 30 in this year's HSC exam, which apparently was a bit curly for some people. So they get given a function, and this is an exponential curve. Um, that negative tells us it's, it's a decaying curve. So rather than something like uh, you know, a disease that's rapidly increasing in, in case rates, this is something which actually is going to be decreasing like so. So it's actually the kind of situation you get when it's like a radioactive substance and it's decaying getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's that part. And then this part over here, this is a trigonometric curve. So these are the kinds of things which oscillate up and down and up and down and up and down. So um, an electromagnetic wave or a tide that goes up and down, this is the kind of shape that it makes. So what we're being asked to do is mush those two things together and they ask us to find the coordinates of stationary points. And then what this means is, don't find all the stationary points, just find in this little zone here. Um, and the, they've just named where that zone is. Okay? So to find stationary points, we need this thing called a derivative. So that's taking this function up here and doing something which most students should have found this fairly routine. So there's uh, two things, like I said, being mushed together, one being multiplied by another. So it's a product, u times v. So students at this point are pretty familiar with what we call the product rule. And this is something that's on the formula sheet. So students need to, don't need to memorize this, but they can just give it a go. So <laughs> let's see, Mrs. Bell, you can pick up for me if I make any obvious stuff ups, but <laughs> there's v. Here comes u dash, so there's a negative coming out from there, so I'm getting this. Does that look okay to you? Yeah. There's my u dash. Here comes u, and then v dash, that's going to give me cosine. Okay, first line looks okay. So from here, I get a result. I can tidy this up, which I will in a moment, but what they really want me to do is find out when this is equal to zero. That's what find the coordinates of the stationary points means. So let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit. Let's see here. I've got a common factor here and here, here and here. So I'm doing things a little bit quickly because I'm just kind of focusing on the, the end goal here. So I'm going to factor that out. Let's put that cos x out the front, minus sine x at the back. There's the minus sign. Checking for any errors. That looks okay to me. So this is our derivative. So f of x, f dash is the derivative. So I want to know when's this thing equal to zero. Now, I drew these pictures up here not just to illustrate to you what are these things, but actually to do something kind of handy for the next step, right? Here, e to the negative x, that's this shape that I drew before. If this whole thing is going to be equal to zero, then either this part is zero or this part is zero. It's a little bit like this. If I told you, hey, I'm multiplying two numbers together and the answer will be zero, at least one of them has to be zero. Because no matter what the other values are, if they were big or they were small, you'd never get zero at the end unless this or this themselves were zero. Now, when I have a look at this graph, can you see how I've drawn it so it sort of approaches and gets close, but it actually never reaches this kind of horizontal axis. That axis is zero. It never gets there. Um, it's what we call an asymptote there. It gets closer and closer and closer, never gets there. So this part here, I don't need to worry about it. It will never equal zero. I just have to focus on this part. So I'll say stationary points exist when this part here, cos x, so that's very messy, <laughs> minus sine x equals Zero, there's a lot of notation and symbols, but it's actually really important to use verbal communication where important, where necessary. So when I have a look at this, where am I going to solve this? Well, I'm looking between naught and two pi. What's the most obvious way? Okay, well, I might do this. I'm going to rearrange these just a little bit. I'll divide through by cos, I get this. Hmm. So this is equal to 1 when I've got pi on 4 or, hmm, what's the next one? It'll be 5 pi on 4. Can I get a check on that? Yep, looks good to me. So what have I just been doing? I've been trying to solve this thing 
in my head, I've been changing its form to one that I'm a bit more comfortable with and which students, they'll be familiar with how to do this process and working out, okay, this thing here is another graph. This is a question that's all about visuals, right? So how much visual is behind a student's mind when they're graphing or when they're solving, I should say. Now, even though this is unfamiliar to you, this is a curve that they've met hundreds and thousands of times. It's a weird looking thing. It looks like this, like so. I want to know when this weird looking thing is equal to one and it's here. I found the first spot, that one, it's pi on four. And this next one here, five pi on four. So those are numbers, they look a bit weird, but they are familiar to anyone who's done the advanced course and gone all the way through. So the original question did say, find coordinates. I've got an x value, so what I would need to do is put them back into this original function and get a y value. Now I didn't bring a calculator with me, uh, it's somewhere in a bag, but I could really quickly put these in. So I'm going to go e to the power of negative pi on 4, this is the first one, times sine of pi on 4. Hmm, these are gross numbers. I really do need a calculator for this one, so. Uh, well, okay, well that's, that's 1 on root 2, but this, I've got no idea what that is. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, though, I can leave this in exact form for this answer for, for now. So it's that divided by root 2. There's 1. And then I would do the other one. 5 pi on 4. Don't need this. Equals much the same thing. You do find sine of 5 pi on 4. That's going to be the negative, Minus five isn't it? So it will actually be negative e to the blah, 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 blah. Some exact stuff that my calculator will worry about. Now, this actually is the answer for this part of the question. So I've got all the numbers that I need. I'll just highlight them. Pi on four matches with that number, which looks messy, but don't be intimidated by it. And then five pi on four matches with this number. These are the coordinates of the stationary points. That's part one. But uh, this won't cut it for part two, or part B, I should say. It says, I need to draw a picture. I've been drawing pictures all the way through this, right? But these are kind of like pieces of the puzzle, as it were. It's like I've got the different jigsaw pieces. I need to fit them together and work out what the entire picture looks like. To do that, I really do need to know what these numbers are. So I'm going to calculate, but you've got one, don't you? Do you want to, okay. What did we get for the first one? Did you already oh, work that I one out? Uh, do you want to, you go ahead and work out some numbers um, because then we can start to piece together, this is part B now, what this thing looks like. So I'm going to draw it like so. <laughs> okay, and I might, in fact, just while you're doing that, I am going to, I think I've got one here. Ah. All right, you do the first one, I'll do the second one. No, you're fine. Uh, that's okay. You can just give me a decimal when you, once you get there. So the first one is 0 0.322. 0 0.322. Yeah. Interesting. What'd you get for the other one? Oh, you're, you haven't done that one yet. I'll give it a go. That's... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I'm following, I think. So it's going to be quite small. It's going to be quite small. Where's my E? <laughs> Uh, it'll be smaller. No, it'll be smaller. Because look, it's negative 5 pi on 4. Yeah, so you might have already changed the numbers for me. So just as we're doing this part here, what's worth noticing is that um, a lot of the laborious, like the part that looks intimidating and messy to someone who doesn't have a mathematics background, me working out what this is or getting a number out, that's, that's this thing doing some work, not, not this, right? So I'm almost there at an answer. Minus 0 0.0139. Yeah, me too. Uh, whoops. Did you say 139? Yeah, that's what I got. 0.0139. So these are teeny tiny numbers. So I'm going to have to draw this on my scale as accurately as I can. So. No, no, it's, um, yeah, because there is, actually, it's a bit funny because they have provided 
um, this on the page, which wasn't done in HSCs of the past, which is why you know, an HSC of the past, my brain instinctively went to draw it, but they've actually had that provided to them, which is a bit of a clue. But anyhow, um, I need a reasonable scale on this because this is like 30 times bigger than this number. So it's gonna be quite hard to do this accurately. But anyway, let's do my best. So here's two pi, here's pi, there's pi on two, there's pi on four. So there's my first one. Then roughly the same amount of distance, that's five pi on four. A trained expert would have drawn that above the axis rather than below, because I know this is below the axis. Okay, so um, eyeballing, this is gonna have to be like way up here. All right, so I've put some X's here. What these X's indicate is the information I got from completing part A of the question. This X represents this piece of information that I got, and this X represents the other piece of information. So I'm kind of like, all right, I'm going through there, I'm going through there. I've kind of turned this puzzle into like a dot to dot, almost. I'm like, where am I gonna go through here, okay? Now, I need to know where I start and where I finish. So, if I put naught into here, sine zero is zero. So I actually don't care what this is, it's just gonna go through here. I'm making more dots for myself. The more dots I've got, the easier it is to piece it all together. What else should I put in here? I should probably put pi, because that's also, sine of pi is also zero. So I've got another x here. Um, sine of two pi is also zero. So I've got that spot there. I feel like this is enough actually for me. Now the reason why I know this is enough is because in part A I was trying to find where are the places that, see how this thing turns around, it like wiggles up and down. So in part A I went and I found that there are two of them, only two, here and here. So this is like a high one, a mountain, this one's a low one, a valley. So I know it's not going to wiggle around anywhere else. When I completed part A I only found it wiggled Twice. Wiggle is the technical term, by the way. So I'm going to do my best to dot to dot this shape. And I'll admit that is a weird looking shape. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not common. It's not common to see something like that. But I could. In fact, I've got, I've got it on my phone. So let's go ahead and see if I can draw this. It's true, like that's, Sorry. how nerdy can you get? Okay, oh, check this out, this is not bad. How are we looking? Not okay. bad at all, okay, so. Beautiful. There's the graph. <laughs> I'm actually gonna, I'll hold this up here, I wonder if that's gonna snap into, no, I put it on manual focus, so it's not. Let's fix that, shall we? 